I am feeling tired today. I got to bed at 1 a.m., which is incredibly late for me, considering I usually go to bed about 9.15. So what is that, uh, four hours late? Um, and it's not like I'm going to get up four hours later the next morning. So feeling pretty tired today and just kind of crushed for time. There's one thing I want to point out to you because it is so important to know this one answer. And well, actually, it's more important to know the question and then how to get the answer. And as you've heard me say before, I find that most people are not asking the right questions. And so not only are they not asking the right questions, but then they go looking for the wrong answer to the wrong question. And so if you can just figure out what the most important questions are and how to answer them in very concrete, solidified, immediate ways, then you start to notice things happen to your portfolio. Hey everybody, this is RC Peck and this is my weekend podcast. And really what I want to share with you is just this idea, and it's not a new idea, but it's something I want to share with you. And it's this idea that the market tells us what's going to happen, right? So if I just use maybe a, a used metaphor, but whenever there's a curve in the road, and let's consider this a road that's been traveled, there's always a sign saying, you know, 15 miles ahead or some gigantic yellow triangle-like metal sign that tells you to slow down or there's some arrow because it has learned that road, the people who are the stewards of the road have learned, hey, we need to put a sign here. And I wanted to look for signs in the market to see what happened before the 1974 market correction or the 1987 market correction. Right? I wanted to see what happened before those or the 1998 market correction. The market fell 25% in 1998 or the 2000 to 2002 or the global financial crisis. Like I wanted to see well, what was happening between before you know the actual market really took a hit? And so I started looking at price charts. As you know, having a dyslexic mind, dyslexic mind, dys, dyslexic brain, it it forced me to use my brain in a different way. And what used to be a disability is a is a feature of mine now. And so I looked to the price charts to see what's the tell, what's the thing that happens consistently before market corrections. And one of the things that I noticed is what I will just call market flow. And I'll describe this price chart in a minute, but what I noticed was there's this relationship between two major asset classes. And as you know, there's only four places you can put your money on this planet, and you can never take it out of one of those four. So you're always invested at all times. Your money's either in the stock market, the bond market, the currency market, or the physical asset market. And each one of those four Sect for sectors, for asset classes, for quadrants can be broken down more. But you can't, there's no fifth quadrant. There's nothing called cash. Cash is currency. There's nothing called setting aside, meaning I'm putting it outside of those four quadrants. It cannot happen. So that means money's always flowing from one to the other. And I mean always as in always. It has always been flowing. And so that got my brain thinking, well, what does that flow look like? What would the flow look like if money was flowing from the bond market to the stock market or the stock market to the bond market or the bond market to the real estate market, which is the subsector of physical assets? And so I looked to the price charts. And so if you look at the screen, you'll notice that there are three lines. One is a price line, and then you have a red line and a blue line. So I'll just tell you this. The market has never made a historic crash, and I'm using the word crash in very hypey terms, right? The, the market has never corrected more than 20% before this blue line has been above the red line on this specific price chart. Now, I'm not going to share with you the specific price chart because that would not be fair to my research clients and training clients, but what I'm pointing out to you is there are tells in the market, and one of the tells is to notice where money is flowing. And so one of the things that my clients start to learn is, hey, if I'm getting freaked out by a zero hedge advertisement or article or Porter Stansberry um, email campaign, I can turn to an image and say, is that true? Is that true? Because if it is true, money is going to change its flow. And what I will say to you is money always changes its flow before a large correction. And so this blue line, as you can see, is very clearly below the red line. And so that tells me with probability and statistics and history 
that we are pretty far from having any sort of major correction. I think we will have another 50% correction. And the last time we had our two other two 50% corrections. Now, I will say this. I want to interrupt myself. This is not the only price chart I look at. I ask myself three sets of questions on three different types of price charts, which once they're set up, it's literally takes you about a minute to get the answer, which is pretty amazing because you're really leveraging the power of visual information. And so what I want to leave you with is one of the questions you want to be asking yourself is where is money flowing? Where is money flowing? Because when you have that answer, then you have the answer to how the stability of the market is doing, where your money should be positioned. And when you know that, that really gives you that unfair advantage to protect and grow your money in a way that other people just don't have access to. So what's the takeaway? The takeaway is where is the money flowing? Ask yourself, where is the money flowing? And once you know that answer, then you know how to position your money. Now, again, that one question is not the only question, but asking yourself that question, where is it flowing? To bonds, to stocks, to physical assets, to currencies? And once you know that, the amount of clarity you have, and that's what I fight for most. I fight for most is first get clarity, first get clarity. Not a bias or what's right or what's wrong or should you do buy and hold or should you do a 60-40 bond split. But first, get clarity on what is actually happening. What's the upside? What's the downside? So when you go in, you know that. So I don't think it's words. I, I don't think it's stories and I don't think it's more data. I think if you can visualize and you can visually see where the money is flowing, of course you have to have the right time frame, the right frequency, the right the right price charts you need to be comparing and looking at quote unquote the right things most people don't but once that's set up guys it is set up for life and you notice that you stop looking for the next shoe to drop it just you and, and even if you do look or get scared you have a place to look immediately and say oh i'm fine and that's what i really want you to know that there's a way to know that you will be fine that is not complicated Hey guys, this is just another step in helping you protect your portfolio and your future. Until next time, this is RC Peck. Hey guys, thanks so much for being with me. <laughs> Super, I'm not groggy, but <laughs> I'm just between having to get a lot done and having uh, not a lot of sleep. Um, I really appreciate you having me in your world. Thank you for that. One of the biggest compliments you can ever give me is your attention and tuning in to these weekly podcasts um, and letting me share with you my own uh, kind of visual point of view of what the market is doing uh, is my honor. So you guys have a great week, a great month. It's Financial Literacy Month. If you're in the U.S., tax time is coming up. So thank yourself, be kind to yourself, and I look forward to connecting with you next week. All right, take care.